Welcome to Starkville First United Methodist Church. We're so glad you're worshiping with us today. And whether you like the traditional style or contemporary or evening worship, God will speak to you in the songs and the silences, the prayers and the words of each service. We're so glad you're worshiping with us. Welcome to the morning service of First United Methodist Church of Starkville, the church in the heart of the town with Christ in the heart of the church. Our weekly Sunday services are at 8.30 and 11 a.m. and our evening service is at 6 p.m. Join us now as we come together and exalt Jesus Christ our Lord.
fun, beautiful music to begin our worship service together and uh, how good it is that we can gather this morning as we worship our Lord. We welcome you to First United Methodist Church. If you're visiting with us this morning, we give you a very warm welcome and we encourage you to come back and worship with us often. Bring friends and, and family with you as well. Let me encourage every one of you, if you will, take the time to register your attendance on the attendance pads that you'll find there in the pew. And if you'll register your attendance and then pass it down so that others on the pew can do likewise and, and uh, then take the opportunity before you leave today to greet those folks that are sitting nearby. Please notice all the announcements in the worship bulletin. Uh, so many things go on in the life of our church and we want you to be involved in them. You'll notice that uh, there are several things that are coming up uh, in the month of August. So uh, uh, take note of that. Take the, the bulletin home with you and, and keep it uh, as a calendar for the coming days. Our children certainly did it once again last night with their summer musical. This was their first, and uh, uh, considering the great success that uh, was had, and the great job that they did, it certainly will not be our last. If you were there, you realized that it was great, the food was good, and uh, we had a good time, thanks to Cindy Melby and Ted Beverly, and, and certainly a host, a host of so many others that worked so hard all week long to, to make that happen. To me, it's just, Amazing, and folks have been talking about it all morning about what was done in just a week's time and, and uh, what a great success it was. So we thank you for that. As you pray this week, please uh, remember in your thoughts, in your prayers, uh, Carl Nuzzo, his mother passed away uh, this last week and we ask that you remember Carl and, and uh, his family in, in these coming days. Now would you please stand as we join together in our call to worship. Come, gather together like those who sat at Jesus' feet so many years ago. We gather with joy, for we too want to be disciples of Christ. I tell you, Christ is here with us, calling us now to life and love. Let us praise God. Let us pray together. O oh God of wonder and might, how we do praise you for bringing us together for worship on this day. Lord, we confess that some of us really couldn't wait to get here. Others of us came out of habit, and still others were a little hesitant to come today because of all those things that we feel that we must do. But we're here all of us sitting at your feet. Now, may we all learn from you and make what we learn a part of our daily lives so that we'll truly be the people that you call us to be. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Our hymn, The Gift of Love, is numbered 408 in your hymnal. Let us sing together all stanzas.
remain standing as we unite in the historic confession of the Christian faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we join our hearts and minds and souls in prayer this day, let us begin with a moment of silence as we give thanks to God for all that he has done and remember those who may need our prayers this day. Let us pray. O oh God, whose love is beyond our imagination, yet present in this very moment to caress our souls and heal our wounds, hear our prayer of gratitude and praise, O oh God. In all weeks you look with compassion, with eyes that seeing us still love us, with grace that knowing us still offers abundance to our need. Make us a people who secure always in the knowledge that you provide enough, are quick to give thanks and eager to share our bounty with each other and all your children. Week by week we gather at your table of compassion to be reminded and to experience anew your life freely given. As you fill our hearts and fill our hands at that table, send us forth to give to those whose thirst is burning whose lives are empty, whose hopes are bound to a community that cares and responds. This day we give thanks for your church that can include us as givers and receivers of your grace. Bless the United Methodist Church wherever it serves this day in your name. Bless its leadership, its efforts, its generosity, its connections with the universal church in every place where gift and need touch. We thank you for Startful First United Methodist Church and for its members who make it the wonderful community it is. Call this congregation to even greater faithfulness in this community that we might have the courage to reach beyond what we have dreamed to your bountiful vision for our lives and your ministry. Dear God, it is with this in mind that we are able to pray the prayer that you taught us to pray so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time, Miss Jane invites our children to the front. I like to take pictures, I like to have. Oh, real good. One, two, three. Oh, I 
I'll turn the camera off. That's what I usually do. Now let's try again. One, two, three. There, I'm sure I got a really good picture of Reese, didn't I? Is it backwards? What do you mean it's backwards? It was backwards. Well, let's see this picture. That's me. I didn't have it focused on Reese, did I? I have it focused the wrong way. All right, let's let's try again. Now, Reese, stay where you are. And let's see where we are. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. Now, let's see. There's Reese. You did it the wrong way. That's better, isn't it? You want to see, Reese? That was silly of me to focus on myself when I was trying to take a picture of Reese, wasn't it? No way I did do it. I, I should have been focusing on Reese if I wanted a picture of him, shouldn't I? You know, sometimes in our everyday life we get focused on the wrong thing. We pay attention to the wrong kinds of things. And um, that's what our Bible lesson today is going to talk about. It comes from the book of Luke, the 10th chapter. And Jesus was visiting in the home of two sisters, Mary and Martha. And they were friends of Jesus, and they were so happy he was there. But as soon as he got there, Martha went rushing off and started working on dinner and all the preparations that needed to be done for having a guest. Whereas Mary went with Jesus and sat down at his feet and listened to his teaching. Well, Martha didn't like it. And she complained to Jesus. She said, can you not see that my sister is making me do all the work? Don't you care that she's not even helping me? Tell her to help me. And this is what Jesus said. Martha, Martha, you are worried about too many things. Only a few things are important. words today, what Jesus might have been saying to Martha was keep the main thing the main thing. Martha made the mistake of focusing on herself, whereas Mary was totally focused on Jesus and everything that he was teaching. And Jesus said she had chosen the right thing by doing that. So I want you to Let me walk with thee is numbered 430 in your hymnal. Let us sing to all four stanzas and let us stand please as we sing.
us pray. Dear God, what a great opportunity we have at this time to give back a portion of that which you so greatly blessed us with. Dear God, I pray that you bless both the gift and the giver. And I pray, dear God, that we would be faithful in using these gifts to further your kingdom here on this earth. In your name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Luke 10, 38 through 42. Now as they went on their way, he entered a village, certain village, where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So he came, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
vengeance might be. Though righteous thy anger, O Lord, shield me in danger. Glory, guide me. On thee, Lord, alone will I I joked last night with Cindy that with the children's performance, uh, they preached the gospel message, they sang and danced it, and it was a fabulous thing, and we've had the gospel message sung again, thank you for that, but I know y'all really want to hear a sermon, so <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need only of one thing. Couldn't each one of us just substitute our name in that sentence and let Jesus speak to each one of us? Well, I guess that's why we're here this morning, isn't it? To hear Jesus speak to each one of us in the songs and litanies, silences and prayers, scripture and sermon. And one thing that amazes me about our holy scriptures is how they hold a truth that was meaningful and transformational for people so many thousands of years ago and yet they still hold a truth for us so many years later. And each time I read our stories, it's like turning a kaleidoscope and seeing another beautiful image made with the same pieces of colored glass. Thousands of years ago when this story took place, it was a whole other world. 
The Jewish people had the laws written upon stone, but Jesus said he came to write the laws upon the people's hearts. And what he wrote about on their hearts was what we talked about last week, the great commandment, to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. To illustrate what this looked like, Jesus told the parable of the Good Samaritan. And you know this story. Back then, the hatred between the Jewish people and the Samaritans ran so deep that the Jewish people must have been shocked out of their minds to hear Jesus say that a Samaritan was the neighbor. Not the Jewish priest and not the Levite, but the despised Samaritan, the one who showed mercy to a man in need. And Bob Rambo, our new district superintendent and preacher last Sunday, pointed out that loving God and loving neighbor were different sides of the same coin. And it's true. You can't hate your neighbor and love God at the same time. For the image of God is in everyone. Our story today comes right after Jesus shocks them with this new definition of neighbor that includes the lowest of the low. Jesus writes the law in their hearts so that the believers are freed to sow mercy to anyone in need. Our story today illustrates how to fulfill the first part of the great commandment, to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. So we have Jesus continuing on his journey to Jerusalem, his journey that will take him to the cross. And Jesus continues to surprise his followers with what is really important in a life of faith during this stay at Mary and Martha's house. Now we live in the great state of Mississippi, the hospitality state, and we can welcome and charm and tantalize the taste buds with any person who comes in with our southern hospitality and our down-home cooking. But the people in the Middle East can give us a run for our money. And you can just see it now as Jesus and his entourage are walking down this dusty road towards Jerusalem and they stop at this house in Bethany, about two miles from Jerusalem, near the Mount of Olives. And it seems that Jesus must have stayed there many times while he was in the area, for Martha welcomed him like someone he, she knew and loved. So she welcomed him and began bustling immediately with all the cooking and cleaning, the customary foot washing and preparing a place of rest for this guest. And Mary, Mary sits at the, the feet of her Lord. Now most times I've heard this text preached, Martha has represented the one with a servant's heart, the one going out to do all the mission work of a church. And Mary has represented the one with a contemplative heart, the one immersed in the Holy Scriptures, the teachings of Jesus, the prayers of the people. And most of the time I've heard this text preached, the preacher points out that there is a need for both Mary's and Martha's in the church, which is a valid point. The church needs all kinds of people to do all the ministries in the church. But as I read our story this time, and the kaleidoscope turned a little bit, I was struck by Jesus' somewhat harsh words to Martha. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. Jesus says Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. But when we equate Martha's work with Mary's work, we do just that. We take the better part away from Mary. And there are two shocking things that Jesus tells us in our story today. The first is pretty obvious, and I would imagine that you're guessing it, that since I am a woman preacher, I'm going to bring it up. So I will. <laughs> Back then, women could only be saved through their men. They were possessions passed from father to husband. We still see evidence of this in some wedding vows that ask, who gives this woman to be married to this man? So back then, if the father was saved, the daughter was saved. Or if the husband was saved, the wife was saved. And women were not allowed to read or to write or to even touch the Holy Scriptures. So by sitting at Jesus' feet in the place reserved for a male disciple, Mary challenges the traditions of the faith. And on the flip side of that, by allowing Mary to sit at his feet, Jesus' actions reveal and model a new way of being in community, one in which there is no male nor female, nor slave nor free, no Greek nor Jew. 
Now, I think it would have been helpful if Jesus would have just gotten up and gone to help Martha with all the things she was trying to do. <laughs> and then they could all sit down and listen at the feet of Jesus. But no, no, Jesus didn't do that. As one commentator put it, Jesus was asserting women's worth in a society that considered women property and on par with camels when it comes to brains. Jesus affirmed their godliness and their right to study and learn. Jesus was making a radical statement for his time, not setting up women for conflicts between home and career. And now in order to write this new gospel on the hearts of the people, Jesus modeled this new way of being in community all the way through our Bible. You know these stories, the stories of where he, he kneels at the feet of his disciples and washes their feet, or he cooks them a meal. All these were things that only women were supposed to do. And we see the way Jesus includes women, like in our story today, or when he called out the bent-over woman in the temple, or healed a woman of another faith. All of those acts would have rendered him tame or unclean in the Hebrew faith. Every time he touched a leper or a blind man or a bleeding woman, he lived out his gospel message, the one he gave his life to tell. Show mercy to your neighbor. Show mercy to anyone in need. And the church today is getting it. The church is getting that the gospel of Jesus Christ eradicates all of the distinctions that we keep creating, those of gender and race and class. But our story doesn't stop there. It, does, it goes much deeper than the shocking surface story of Jesus breaking the laws by teaching a woman and letting her sit at a place reserved for men. The second thing Jesus does in this story is not quite as obvious. Jesus tells us what we all need. Jesus says to each one of us, and feel free to insert your own name here, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken away from her. We live in such a busy culture, and I thought when I moved here last summer from Atlanta that I would be moving into a slower pace of life, but I was wrong. We were just asking this morning, where are our long, lazy days of summer? Because we are just flying all day long. And it's so easy for me to get caught up in the many great things going on at this church, just as I'm sure it's easy for you to get caught in the many things going on in your lives. And the question Jesus asks us today, are we so distracted by the many tasks in our life that we don't take the time to sit at the feet of Jesus? The Quakers have a great way of simplifying their work. When they're asked to do something, they ask themselves, is this mine to do? And they wait for God to tell them. And they answer honestly, if God tells them to do the work, they agree to do it. And if God tells them not to do the work, they don't do the work. We know in our heads that we are not saved by works, but by the grace of God and by our faith in Jesus Christ. But my, oh my, do we keep trying to save ourselves by doing everything under the sun to prove our worthiness as a mother or an employee or a son or a boss or a Christian. But my friends, Jesus is the one who saves us. Jesus is the only thing we need. And that's what he reminds us of today. Jesus affirms Mary for choosing the better part of sitting at the feet of her Lord, listening and learning and letting her life be changed by the power of God. And in doing this, Jesus tells us all what we need, only one thing, to spend time daily with him. We, like Mary, must take the time to sit at the feet of our Lord and listen to his teachings, now through Holy Scripture, or through a covenant group, or a study group, or in church. We must listen and learn and let our lives be changed by the power of God. There are so many interpretations of this story throughout history, and that's why it's important for each one of us to commit to engaging the text, text and hearing what God is saying to us. Time with God in Scripture must be a priority in our lives. We must take the time to listen so that we can respond faithfully to God's call on our lives. And I admit this is difficult for me too. It is true that the church needs both Mary's and Martha's, and we all probably have a bit of both in all of us. But if we listen to Jesus say that Mary's part is the better part, and we prioritize spending time with God, 
then we'll find ourselves grounded in God and not frantically attempting the many tasks life throws at us. As one commentator said, Jesus' words are neither an attempt to devalue Martha's attempt at hospitality nor an attempt to attack a woman's traditional role. Rather, Jesus defends Mary's right to learn from him and says this is the crucial thing for those who wish to serve him. And it is crucial for each one of us to take time each day and sit at the feet of Jesus. He can give us anything we need in life. For when we spend time with God daily, we remember whose we are and what we're to be about. And that is building up the kingdom of God, building up this body of Christ. For when we spend time with God daily, that's when God helps us discern what is important to spend our time on and what is not important enough to keep worrying about. If we will ground ourselves in scripture, we will be prom prompted to ask, I promise you that but we will be prompted to act in ways that honor God and honor each other and honor ourselves. When we spend time with God daily, that's when we get comfortable enough with God to ask for what we really need. Whatever it is you need, it's gonna come from Jesus. If you need peace from your worries, you know that it's only God that can give you that peace. If you need to be more kind and gentle with your words, only God can help you learn how to control that tongue, or at least that's the way it worked for me. What about patience? We could all use some more of that. And God is the only one that can increase our patience as things go wrong in life. And self-control, God's the source of that too. Because when we understand how much we are loved by God, we let ourselves get filled up with that love and let our lives overflow onto all those around us and our hearts are filled with God's joy. You've tasted that joy before. When you spend time with God each day before you know it, your lives will be filled with the fruits of the Spirit. Peace, love, joy, gentleness, kindness, patience, and self-control. And then you end up living out the great commandments for all your words and actions will honor God and each other and yourself. So it's crucial for each one of us, like Mary, to take the time to sit at the feet of our Lord and to listen to his teachings, to learn and to let our lives be changed by the power of God. Friends, there's only one thing you need. It's Jesus. Amen. Now, as we sing our closing hymn, if you'd like to become a part of this particular body of Christ, I invite you to come forward as we sing our last song. Or if you've realized that what you really need in life is Jesus, I'd like to share this sweet prayer that the kids taught us last night in their show. And just say it for yourself at some time. It says, Come into my heart, Lord. Stay with me there. So I'll have the real love, the true love, a love I can share. Please stand and join us in singing number 462, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus.
So go from this place knowing there's only one thing you need, and that's Jesus. So go from this place to spend a little more time with him each day. Go in peace.